That ought to run. You know, a little over 130. All right. That thing ran for a couple of minutes and it sat there at 150 the whole time. So that is not a top end issue on this saw, whatever its issue is. That's good to see. Got pretty much the same 150, so we have two good top ends, and they're consistently the same kind of pressure. And these are stock. These are not modified whatsoever. These are as they came out of the box. So whatever's going on with these two 576s, it's not the top end. One more. This guy says get tired. Choke lever broke. Yeah, it's broke. Chain guard's got a chip off. Yep, this does. Tank. Something. So there's some things going on with this saw. But fundamentally, he says it's tired. And this is an older one. This is probably actually one that's been in the video channel. I think we did this one back in 2016. I believe we did a rebuild of one. I think this was that. So after all these years later, let's see if it has any compression left. Well, pretty much the same as the other ones. So, the chance of the top end of this one being bad are pretty low too. Nice to see that level of consistency. It's nice to see that compression all these years later. You know?
hoist it up a little bit fat. And I gotta get through this firewood because I'm gonna burn all of it this year, I think. So these test saws are good for that, you know. Well on to these 576s. One of them, and I don't know which one, is supposed to have a high idle where it doesn't come off idle. And the other one runs like it has a choke on, is what it says. That's what he says. And I really don't know. This one here feels a little funny on the throttle cable, so maybe something's going on with that one. Just take a quick look before I fire it up. Now I already did uh, my standard compression tests in all three, all three of them had around 150 pounds. And I documented that. So the top ends on these are probably pretty good. There might be something going on in the controls. Yeah, see this one here is not even getting full throttle. So this is the one that's not running good. So it's not a it's not a, a issue relative to internals. It has something to do with the handle and throttle case. I'm not sure what though. See that? Just simply won't go to full throttle. So we're going to have to look inside here and see if we can figure out why. Put that air filter right back on. I guess this falls into the category of shop notes. The, this guy here was described as it runs like the choke is on and won't go to full throttle. And when I looked at it, sure enough, it wouldn't go to full throttle. But it wasn't related to choke, it was related to the throttle cable that had failed. So, took the tank off, realized I don't have one of these cables. And so, what I think I'm going to do. Um, for the time being, it's just move the gas tank from the better saw to the one that runs. You know? And it's actually a worthwhile exercise to put on video, I think. One thing about 576s is I think they're the last of the easy to work on Husqvarna's. And little things like this are the reason why. So, let me clear my bench a little bit. He likes running those big 24 inch bars. Notice I don't have my space heater running for that open can of gas. It usually is not a good idea. Better hang these up so I can bring them back to them. I'm going to also go and blow some of the dirt off this before I get much further into it. Well, I had to stop because I ran out of memory. So, putting the handle on these things is pretty easy. It kind of turns on pretty much the same as the 372s. See that right there? That goes into that hole.
And that's really it. And once you've done that, start putting screws back in. So that saw should run now. Do a choke function test where you pull the choke out, push it in, and release it so it has the high idle. This is the tank vent. You can sit right where it is. So let's get the handle back on and see what the, if this saw will fire right up and be ready to return. I do believe we have a chainsaw. So there's one down. And we just tighten this stuff up, put the bar and chain on it, and let the young fella know that he, he can come pick up his saw. Now the thing is, with the advent of the 572, these are the 576s, I'm sorry. So these are the 576s, and they've been effectively discontinued and obsoleted by the 572s. I always prefer these over the 372 x torques, not the 372 original editions, but the x torques. And there's a fair number of these in my saw community, which kind of bears out my um, my feelings. This fellow right here has got three of them, and he's made a living with these things now for a couple of years, and has had really no troubles at all. These two came in, are the first ones I can remember coming in with any issues. And they've been around a while, you know, he keeps them pretty clean for a logger. Unlike his dad. <laughs> um, Yeah, these are 2015 models. And uh, so they've been around a while. They've had some time. And they've made a lot of money for this fella. You know, he's done quite well with these saws. And uh, I hope to build one for myself in the future, just so I have one on the channel. And maybe I'll end up with one of these someday. But these are very, very nice saws. They're smooth. They've got good power, and um, they're fuel efficient for what they are. They start easy. They run good. They restart. They do all the things you want a saw to do. So I think this is one of Husqvarna's better ideas. It's a little shame it didn't take off in the marketplace, probably because it had the stigma of the 575s that came before it, which was basically... The, what this was evolved from was an update on the 575 and they had the reputation for they had some issues and they were a little heavy for what they were and they weren't 372s all which combined to make them sort of a flop in the marketplace when these came out they were much much improved and even though they were a mature design pretty much ready to rip 
they still weren't really able to eclipse the 372, even though the x torque I think, was a lesser saw, just my humble opinion. And now they've come out with the 572, which pretty much put both the 372 x torque and the 576 out the pasture. But I would not be afraid, you know, to have one of these if I'm a pro. I think they're a good saw. Now for the fun part. I don't know if you guys remember this saw right here from a, a little while back. The G372XT that I struggled with, right? I struggled with this for quite some time. And I finally got it running pretty good. And I had done the modification to the intake where I got the intake both on the cylinder and on the intake boot plus the filter holder. Muffler mod, no base gasket build, and I ran it for a while, ran pretty good, but I don't have time to really put testing on it, so I sent it out to the guy who does a lot of my testing, you know, pro level logger type, you know. And he ran it since January. So it's got a three months and he says it's been his primary filling saw for that period of time. So the question is, does it hold up? Well, it came back with a problem. Now, to set you up for this, if you remember, I did not like the handle, so I put a used OEM handle on it, right? And I put a new ignition system from a OEM X-Torque. So it's the, it's the X-Torque ignition that happened somewhere around 2017 and later that has the ability to spark at a lower RPM and a different timing curve so it idles better. Those two things made the saw quite a bit different. Combined with the modifications in the muffler mod, no base gasket build, it solved a lot of the problems the saw had for me. It starts, it idles, it has good power, it doesn't smell like burning rubber, and a few other things. And so of course I sent it out and he ran it for quite some time. Brought it back. Throttle cable had failed on this thing and the throttle cable is an OEM throttle cable. So it wasn't the Chinese See, I pull the trigger, nothing happens on the carburetor. It's not pulling at all. It looks to me like it just jumped out of its little clip. We'll see. But he goes, fix it, and I want it back. So he wants this thing back. But when I was looking at it, it's got some other things. The handle bar is quite bent. See how it's got a bend right there and it's rolled over here it's not quite parallel there anymore so this has been bent by the way that's a wrap I've had with these handlebars plus the ones in the 660s are always a little bit too soft so this one here yet again has proven that to be true and it bent and I don't think he did anything unusual I noticed this got bent a little bit and I noticed he dinged in the muffler mod. By the way, if you swing an arc up through here, how you roll a saw into a tree, when you do your muffler mods you gotta take that into account. I usually do, this one here I didn't. Which is why I like to exit over here so that when he rolls it in, he does big trees. Nothing this guy does is small. It's no, you know, cants like you see these guys doing with cookies. He cuts big trees. He bore cuts all of them. Game of logging style. So this saw is buried into the tree all the time. So I'm going to bend that out or grind it out. Straighten this thing up. I'll probably just replace that handle and fix the throttle cable and send it back. See how long this thing lasts. I guess I'm surprised because I expected things like the pull start to fail, you know, and I've had some issues before with the cases having the bearing pockets beat out of them, you know. Um, of course, the saw that had the bearing pockets beat out of it had a highway top end, 
with a pop-up, so that may have stressed it more than this one will. But for the money that's into this saw, it's already paid for itself. And that's going to start uh, a narrative that some people are not going to like. And, uh, and once I got the power to where he was happy with it, you know, he's not really all that interested in giving it up. And it's turned into a, a, a work tool for him, like the 660s did before, that uh, is basically proving its worth. But I think this needs to be OEM. You know, the handle needs to be a better handle. I don't know if I've got one over there I can toss on it right now, but that needs to be upgraded in my mind. And, uh, and obviously we need to fix the throttle cable, see if I can just do that right here. a good running saw right there and again this is that farmer tech g372 xt or holes forma g372 xt it's been modified muffler mod oem ignition oem handle with a throttle cable all right one more thing now this saw here is one i acquired on a trade from a fella out west who people might know, might not. I'm not going to mention the name because it doesn't matter anymore. And I would say I did not do good on that deal because I sent out some things um, that were actually quite valuable, like distant two-man saws and, and the like in... Uh, one of the things I sent out was a McCulloch 797 that was in running condition that was using for milling. And what I ended up with was a 272 that I built into something that was quite nice. And this, when I was doing the trade, I thought this was going to be a 930. Well, when I got it, I realized it was a 920, and to add insult to injury, it never did really run that well. And that was after I spent probably $300 in shipping. So, <laughs> um, by the time I was done, I probably spent $1,000 of saws to get a 9 20 and a 272. My fault. I can't fault the person. 
I just didn't know what I was doing at the time. I've learned a lot since, obviously. This was a little more than 12, 13 years ago. It was quite some time ago. I really wanted the 930 is what I was looking for. And by the way, you can tell a 920 because it's got the single screw up here. Yeah, it's got the the older style air filter, right? The 930 has the two screws. And I mean this it's a nice looking saw. It's got good stuff. And in retrospect, I kind of like the saw. But it never did run well. Never did. And when I started doing the analysis, I realized pretty quick that it was sucking air right through the PTO seal. And I may have actually run this on the on the channel where I where I shot some brake clean in there and, and uh, pointed out the fact that it just was drawing air right through that seal. That seal is just whooped. So what do you do about it? Yeah. All right. So what I want to do is pull the oil pump out because the oil pump houses the main seal, of the crankcase, and just set another seal in there and the tap it in. Don't know how easy that's going to be. So I figure I better try it on. Something like this first. And that one now has a new seal. And this is a new old stock oil pump that one of my 920s is going to get. So now that I see how that operates and how that works, I'm putting my new old stock oil pump with a brand new seal. Right back in the package and go right back into my work box. And let's see if we can replicate that on this one right here. I want you to wrap your head around the concept of just think of all those 372s and 390s and all these other saws that you've watched my videos as we go through and, and replace the bearings with these ever more complex set of tools and stuff. When you put on these O-rings, you got to roll it back a little bit so when it goes on it actually pulls itself back on. All right. All right, we get a little oil on this thing. That's all it just needs to get run. You need to lean it out some. It's running a little bit rich. We have a running 920 where before it was not running. And all it needed was that case seal. That's awesome. I think that's a great way to end a video.